Hey everybody, this is Phil Leitz again from Arids Only. Um, I wanted to make a short video to try to hit a few of the main points uh, that freak people out about uh, winter cooling with Euromastics. So um, just for the sake of uh, setting up some terms here, uh, brumation, estivation, hibernation, these all mean different things. Um, and they have very, very specific definitions. Um, so rather than get too nitty gritty on that, uh, I'm just going to use winter cooling or winter cycling uh, or cool down as sort of general terms for what I'm talking about here. Um, and this is a really sometimes stressful uh, situation that people have to experience with their Euromastics, especially for first time Euromastics owners, because uh, what we often see as very normal and not bothersome behavior during winter can freak out a lot of people because they sort of some of those behaviors fly in the face of what we generally think of as um, healthy reptile behavior. So I'm going to use the way all of my animals here are cooled um, and sort of the, the timeline that I go through as uh, just sort of like a brief narrative intro for what I'm talking about. And then um, I'll talk just a little bit more specifically about some of the details um, uh, about what to expect and, and, and you know, maybe what to sort of keep an eye on uh, when it comes to winter cooling. Um, winter cooling here, I live in Colorado and all my animals are in the basement. That's where my facility is. And so um, I see a pretty substantial drops in ambient temperature as the winter starts to approach here in uh, Colorado. So usually around the end of September or the, the beginning of October, I start to see the first major drops in overall temperature and I start to see the results in my animals. Um, and every single one of my Euromastics does it, whether it's a fresh baby that I hatched earlier this summer or whether it's an adult I've had for 15 years. They all experience some degree of uh, reduction in behavior for winter time, even the babies, the little babies, it's, but it's nothing to freak, freak out about. It's totally normal, not a big deal. Um, but it, again, around the first, the end of September and the first of October, uh, first couple of weeks is when I start to see it the most. I have animals that will something as simple as just reducing the amount of time that they're out every day, reducing the amount of food that they're eating every day, reducing the amount of um, defecation they're doing every day, uh, just by a little bit, all the way to certain animals that um, as soon as it gets cold, they dive under a hide and I don't see them for weeks. I have a few, I have one animal in a pen right here that I haven't seen for five weeks, but I know she's fine. She does it every year. It's no big deal. It's the way she does her cooling. So um, that kind of stuff can be really, really freaky. Um, so uh, about the time that I start to see that reduction in uh, behavior from my animals, I'm going to take that as the indicator to, that it's time to start uh, winter cool down. So I take all of the lights in my entire facility and I start cutting the uh, length of time that the lights are on every day by an hour every week uh, from about the beginning of October until roughly the uh, middle to end of November. So right about now, um, I'm starting to see the last few adjustments that I'll make to my photo period, which is the amount of time that the lights are on every day. Um, so that way from about a week or two from now until the end of December, my lights will only be on from about 8, 8.30 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. So it's a, it's a very reduced, shortened photo period. That, along with the drop in ambient daytime temperature and nighttime low temperature in my rooms, is almost all I do to cool all of my animals down. Um, I've been doing it this way for... Uh, almost 10 years and I've never lost an animal in cooling, never had any problems with this. Um, so, uh, I mean, I've made some tweaks along the way, but I've, I've never had any bad results from that. And, um, I've had really good results breeding, uh, all my Euromastics for the last several years. So I think, uh, whatever I'm doing uh, for now with winter cooling is working out pretty well, but I just wanted to share some of this so you guys don't freak out, uh, because it can be really, really frightening. Um, the other thing that I'll see is uh, a reduction in overall appetite, um, sometimes associated with seasonal food preferences. So, um, you know, a lot of my animals are rejecting the normal foods that I give them all the time that they usually relish, like endive, dandelion greens, turnip greens. These are things that almost all of them love most of the year round. But right now, for one reason or another, they're just not feeling it, okay? Um, and so what I tend to do is in the winter, I reduce the amount that I feed them. So for almost all of my animals, I'll only put food, any kind of food at all in the cage once every three to four days. 
Um, and most of the time that food doesn't get eaten. Now some of the babies, they'll scarf and if I see them running around looking like they're hungry, of course I feed them more. But most of my animals are not really trying to eat, eat much this time of year at all. Um, another uh, sort of important part about diet that I wanna note is uh, for the first few weeks leading up to winter, so let's say the last two, three weeks of September, um, and then through the winter into the spring, um, I drastically reduce the amount of dry food that I leave for the Euromastics. So normally I have a handful of um, sort of select dry foods that I like to feed all these guys, which I'll make another video on diet, so let's not get into too much detail here. But um, I will cut out a lot of that dry food because I'm trying to simulate um, a somewhat harsh uh, winter. Uh, I, I want all the animals to, to go through that natural part of their life cycle so that way I get better results in the spring for breeding. Um, but with that, I, I'd like to mitigate as much risk as I can. And so I feel a little bit uncomfortable offering lots of dry food coupled with reduced photo period and reduced feeding frequency overall. Um, that makes me really, really uncomfortable. So it's something I take out almost entirely. You know, maybe once a week I'll give the animals a dry food. Um, whereas in the springtime, they'll have dry foods available all the time. Uh, so that's uh, another important consideration to make. Um, now, during this cooling period, where the peak of which lasts from about now until the end of December and the first few weeks of, first few days rather of January, um, I try not to mess with my Euromastics at all. I don't take them out, I don't touch them, I just leave them alone because most of them don't want anything to do with me. Um, now the exceptions for that is if I feel like there might be something wrong, if something looks strange in the, in, um, the last time they pooped, if, um, if, if it's been uh, like with this animal over here that I was mentioning, the one I haven't seen for five weeks, if I haven't seen the animal for more than a week, sometimes I'll go in and check on them, make sure they're okay, make sure they don't look like they're dehydrated or losing weight or anything like that. Um, but uh, most of the time they're fine. Uh, but it still can be good practice to check on them once in a while. You don't want to leave it all up to fate or anything like that. Um, now, uh, on to something else, which is, it's my opinion, opinion that you, you probably shouldn't fight the brumation or excuse me the winter cooling process okay so part of why that is uh, why i mentioned this is because i get questions frequently from people who say oh i don't want my animal to go through brumation it makes me uncomfortable it freaks me out or you know they're 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 trying to they have maybe it's a young one and they don't want it to slow down at all during that winter time frame um which okay i can kind of understand that but um i would really advise against like trying to um, get them to not brewmate. People will do this by um, compensating for the drop in temperature in the winter by raising the overall temperature inside the enclosure for the Euromastics. Um, now, in my experience, this usually doesn't stop the animal from brewmating or from cooling if it wants to, uh, but some people have said that it gives them maybe a boost in energy and they come out more even during the winter time. But I think that this is something that's really, really important to their, uh, their life cycle, their metabolism, their psychological well-being, and their long-term health. Uh, winter is super, is very, very, is as natural as springtime for these guys, and it's really important that they're allowed to go through that, um, that part of their, of their life. Uh, it's really good for them. Um, now, uh, then on the tail end of winter, uh, so in the first few weeks of January, um, I will start to gradually increase the overall photo period for the animals. So um, I'll take that photo period from about that's where the lights turn on about eight in the morning and turn off at four and I'll lengthen it by an hour every week where the lights stay on one hour longer uh, every week until they're back up to their normal uh, photo period, which is about 6.30 in the morning until about eight o'clock at night, roughly speaking. Um, and usually in Colorado, um, February, middle of February is when we start to see gradually rising temperatures here. So that increase in photo period tends to correspond with a gradual increase in ambient temperature here in this state. And then um, that's right about that time at the, at the tail end of cooling is when I start throwing pairs together to see if they're going to breed. Um, and usually I get really good success. I get a few 
two, three weeks maybe, the animal's kind of bickering a little bit. Um, but then when they get about ready to breed, the females start to get more receptive, the males start to chase a little bit harder. And um, yeah, then I start to see mating here. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun cycle to go through. Um, understandably, it makes some people a little bit uncomfortable because, you know, inactivity and low appetite and not basking much and not def defecating much, those tend to be behaviors that we associate with unhealthy animals. But given the context of winter cooling, um, it's perfectly normal and shouldn't freak you guys out at all. Um, now, if there's anything I've missed in this video, uh, of course, as always, just shoot me a message like on Instagram or here on, uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Um, and I'll, I'll always answer uh, specific questions. I'm not writing a care sheet, but uh, well, I mean, I, I am writing a care sheet. It's just not done yet. But at any rate, uh, if I missed anything, uh, shoot me a message and I'll get back to you. And uh, hopefully this video was helpful for you. Um, yeah, hasta luego.